lens compatibility is about one of the most important things I look for when I'm buying a lens or considering buying a lens. And what exactly do I mean by that? Well, that is the point of this video because it actually gets me in a lot of arguments or conversations sometimes about which lenses are best and all that. And I'm not talking about which lenses give you the shallowest depth of field, let the lo most light in, or easiest to use, or have the best autofocus that are sharpest. None of that stuff because that's all really important, but that's almost secondary to my main issue, which is lens compatibility. And that's why I buy Nikon lenses. And most of my collection is Nikon lenses. And there's a very specific reason for that. And that's because Nikon lenses have the largest flange distance for where they can mount from the sensor of a camera. And if you don't know what any of that means, you can look up stuff. Uh, there's a lot of articles about it online. But essentially what it means is that when I have a Nikon lens like this one, I can put an adapter, right? This back cap would be off. I can put an adapter on here. And that distance that this adapter covers, right, matches up with the focal distance that it needs to be from the uh, image plane on the GH4. There are smaller adapters. Let me see if I can find one here. Such as this one for Canon. This is a Canon EF adapter. So this goes on there and that's the distance between Nikon and Canon that you need. Now, this is really nice because since there's so much uh, distance for it's got the greatest flange distance. It means you can put adapters in that space, right? So Nikon, if you had a Nikon, it would mount and the sensor is like back here, right? And you can put things in because like Canon, the flange distance is a little shorter. So uh, for Canon mount, you just you know make it match and it works really, really well. You can't go the other way. So for example, let's just say, I have, this is a micro four thirds lens, okay? This is a lens that's designed for the GH4 and other micro four thirds cameras. This flange distance is very, very teeny tiny. So I can't add an adapter to put it to Nikon because you'll lose focus. You won't be able to focus, you know, close focus, infinity focus, it'll mess it all up. And not to mention this lens doesn't cover full frame anyway, but let's say it did. I still couldn't adapt it. Same thing with like Sony E-mount. Very, very, because they're mirrorless, the flange distance is very small, so you can't go the other way. And that's why I buy the Nikon class. I don't use Nikon cameras. I did for a while, but uh, I don't anymore. But these lenses I can mount on virtually any camera system. And this is something that a lot of people know. They buy Nikon glass for this very reason. But there's a lot of people who think that you should invest in the lens that suits your camera. So you see a lot of people who have Canon cameras who only shoot video and they buy all Canon glass because that's what they think, you know, they think that's what you're supposed to do. You can do that. It's certainly fine, but then you're stuck inside that ecosystem, right? Unless you want to start buying adapters to take it from Canon to Sony that are electronic, they get really expensive because let's say you switch camera bodies. Do you want to have to go buy all brand new lenses? Probably not. Now this is only for video, mind you, because photo it's a whole nother thing. You've got autofocus and that kind of has to work with the camera body. So if you're doing photos, yeah, stick with the camera. You're just kind of stuck. But for video where most of the time you're doing manual focus, I hope you should be doing manual focus. You want something like an icon lens and then you can use a Canon body. You can use a Sony body. You can use a Panasonic body with GH4. You can use it pretty much anything. And other people are worried that like, oh, it's, you know, you're using adapters. Isn't that going to degrade the image quality? No, there's nothing in here. This is empty. This is just a hunk of metal. They're really cheap. This is like $15, I think, something like that. They might be a little bit more expensive now because I bought this a while ago. But in any case, uh, it's empty, right? There's, there is nothing in there. So you're not hurting the image quality. Now, if you're using a speed booster or you got glass in there, that can affect it, certainly, and, that, and that's what you'll see. So there's old Canon FD lenses, right? So Canon FD was the old format, and then I think it was in the 90s, Canon switched to the EF mount, which is their electronic mount. So that's when they got rid of the aperture, which is another thing I really like about these old Nikons, is that you have a manual aperture ring, so you don't have to have electronic control over that. It's right there on the lens, like a cinema lens, like you want. Um, but so Canon 
switch from FD to EF. And there are a lot of people who are pissed about that because all of their old lenses, their FD lenses, don't work with EF. You have to have a, an adapter that has glass in it, and that is not what you want. It's not uh, going to make your image look better. It's probably going to make it look worse. So a lot of people were pissed. Nowadays, people don't care about it anymore because most people don't remember that. I, I, I don't remember that. It was before my time. But uh, you can certainly research it and look it up. And there's a lot of old Canon FD lenses that you can buy pretty cheap because no one really wants them anymore uh, that you can use on your Sony mirrorless and your Panasonic mirrorless cameras because the flange distance is uh, greater. It is deeper. So you can get adapters to go that way, but you can't use those FD lenses you can, but again, you can't use it with like one of these dummy adapters. You need a glass adapter uh, on Canon EF and like Nikon cameras. So not as popular, but these older Nikon lenses um, are roughly the same price as those FD lenses. And they're still totally compatible. And what you can do is uh, even the newer Nikon lenses. Let me see if I have one. I'm using one right here, but... Um, I don't have one on me. This lens right here, the one that I'm filming with, is a Sigma 18 to 35, and it is a Nikon mount. And Nikon, I don't know if it was smart or if it was just dumb luck, but on their newer lenses, they they ditched the aperture control. Bad move, in my opinion. I think the aperture control is fantastic. That's why I like the Rokinon lenses. Those are really nice. But for whatever reason, Nikon with their G mount, so this is old Nikon F mount, it's now the G mount. It's the same mounting uh, system, it's just that they went electronic, right? So the Nikon cameras now electronically move a little lever. I don't know if this one, so I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little lever here. Let's see if you can. So see, all right. Little lever, little teeny tiny lever that you can activate with the camera. It does it electronically in the camera, right? Well, uh, but you don't have the aperture control on the new G lenses. But there are lens adapters. Let's see if I have one. That, not that one. This one. Um, that let you, so this little ring here twists and it lets you move that lever. So essentially giving you that manual aperture control back. And it's just a metal hunk of metal that adapts the lens to the camera body that you want. So I've got, um, this is a Canon dummy adapter. I've got some speed boosters. I've got all sorts of stuff. And it's really nice because I can use my lenses on whatever camera I want. So if I rent a Sony a7S, just get an adapter and I can use my lenses. If I get a Canon C300, let's say. I can use my lenses on that. If I get a Samsung NX1, I can use my lenses on that. And you're not stuck in this ecosystem because what they want you to do, these companies, they want you to buy their lenses so that you stick with their camera bodies, right? They want you to buy into their ecosystem and then you stick around and you keep giving them more money. So they can come out with bad cameras like Canon likes to do or not upgrade their cameras. I just shouldn't say they're bad. They just don't like to upgrade. <laughs> they don't like to push the market forward for us uh, video enthusiasts with their DSLRs. They don't like to push the market forward. And so you have a lot of people who bought into the 5D Mark II and that was really big and they bought all the Canon lenses. And a lot of those people felt really, really stuck when Canon didn't upgrade to 4K. Well, that could change, I guess, at some point soon with uh, NAB right around the corner. But... Um, We'll see. I doubt it. Uh, but they want you to buy into their uh, camera system. Now, I have a micro four thirds lens. Why do I have that? Well, it's for the what I was talking about before for photography. Um, so I could this is just like a 12 to 35, um, 24 to 70 equivalent on full frame. If you're curious, you just it's a two times crop. You can do the math. Um, but I use it for photos so I can just, you know, take this around. I use this for travel a lot if I just want to have my GH4 with me, but I don't want all my lenses and stuff. This is nice. just nice walk around kind of a uh, good lens just to have on the camera all the time. And I can just take nice photos with it and it is, uh, stabilized. So I can do some stuff with video that I can't, uh, do with the Nikon lenses. And that's one of the unfortunate things about the GH4 that doesn't have any internal stabilization, but Aha, another reason to buy the Nikon lenses is if you have a camera that has a sensor, a stabilization on the sensor, so in-body stabilization, 
you can use these Nikon lenses and get stabilized footage or photos depending on what you want. You don't need the stabilization in the lens, which I really wish Panasonic would implement on a GH5 or something like that. We'll see, maybe, fingers crossed, one day. But um, yeah, another nice added benefit of having the old just like cheapo, I mean, these are pretty cheap, really affordable compared to everything else. And you know, there's some newer glass that is uh, certainly better. I have, hold on, let me grab it out of my bag. It was stuck. Um, so there are other versions. This is an 85 1.4. This is the 85 1.8. These are different uh, kind of eras of lenses. So this is a little bit newer, looks a lot nicer, honestly, than this older 85. But this older 85 is good too. It's just, I don't like to shoot it wide open. But in any case, you can find stuff that fits your budget because that's probably what you're concerned about. And then you just get some adapters and make it match with your camera so that, you know, in a year or two when they update the camera, they come out with better frame rates, better resolution, better dynamic range, whatever it is. You don't have to reinvest in a bunch of new lenses. You can just stick with what you've got and you don't have to have any special adapters. It just works. And that's what I like. I like stuff that just works and I can upgrade when I want to, not when I feel like I have to. So that's why I think you should buy Nikon lenses, at least for the majority of your kit. You know, if you're gonna, you can certainly invest in a bunch of other stuff too. Like, um, you know, a lot of these lenses cover full frame. The lens I'm shooting with only covers APS-C. Um, the Micro Four Thirds lens obviously only covers Micro Four Thirds. Um, so, you know, like full frame, I think lenses are the way to go because then again, you can use them on the most amount of cameras, but you can buy other stuff too, just depending on what lens makes the most sense. That's when it gets into like sharpness, depth of field, uh, aperture, all that stuff, you know, the stuff that people like to talk about. But I think the first thing you should look at is lens compatibility and is that lens going to actually last you in the long run? Because which the one thing lenses do hold their value pretty well and you can sell them, but the last thing you want to do is buy a bunch of lenses for one camera. You switch camera formats, have to sell all that other stuff, buy all this brand new stuff. Like, no, you're not gonna wanna do that. I've had these lenses for over 10 years now, I think, and they still work great. So it's just a matter of, you know, buying stuff that's actually gonna last you, like a good tripod. Buy a good tripod that lasts you, that way you don't have to buy a new one every year because it keeps breaking or whatever the case may be. So uh, just keep that in mind next time you're looking for a lens because I think it's going to serve you well.